Okay, I'm back with um, the pieces that you will be interfacing in your shirts. So there are four areas that we are going to apply interfacing to in our shirts. Uh, they happen to be the collar stand or band, maybe referred to as each of, either one, the collar itself, the cuff, and a little piece of interfacing is put in the placket of the tower uh, sleeve placket. So there are four places. If you're doing the continuous bias, you don't usually put an interfacing in that little bias piece that you do for a placket. But if you're doing that exterior placket, the tower uh, on the cuff, above the cuff, you will be placing one strip of interfacing in it. So now what you're going to cut of this is in the firmest interfacing. Well, before we do that, how do you know which one to cut? Firm, soft, whatever. Um, the main thing I can tell you is to test. Just test and test and test the different kinds of interfacing. And it will always be different um, depending on what your textile that you are sewing. It's dependent on that and your aesthetic. The one thing I can say is that generally those cuffs and the collar and the collar stand, not so much the placket, but they do like to have a layer of that firm interfacing in it. The degree of firmness uh, can be your aesthetic, but I find that the weight that is considered the firmer um, is usually where I end up for my, my uh, men's shirts anyway. Now generally also, you'll see that like right on here it says cut two of your fabric and cut one of interfacing. Uh, cut one of interfacing. Here you cut four fabrics and two interfacings. This one it was cut two of it, which this one is, that's exactly what you'll do, is cut just two of it. So I'm going to slide that over here for just a moment. But on these three pieces, what most rules will tell you, or instructions you might say, guidelines for sewing is that you put that piece of interfacing on what is the facing side or the side of that collar or collar standard cuff that touches your body that is not seen on the outside. However, a better made garment has the interfacing on the side of the piece that is considered the public side or the one that's going to be seen by everyone. It just supports that piece and especially in shirts um, and keeps it nice and crisp and flat and um, prevents a lot of wrinkling from happening. Uh, both in wear and in laundering or maintaining it. So we're going to make sure that we put our firm interfacing on the public side of each of these pieces. When we do that in shirt making, it's also been discovered that if we only put interfacing on one side and not on both sides, of the piece, then we stand the chance that wrinkles that get pressed in, uh, either in construction or at laundry, make wrinkles on that top part. It also makes the bottom piece not as stable when you're sewing it and it shifts and you can get wrinkles in your piece that you are working on quite easily or little tucks and puckers. So, through trial and error, it has been discovered that if we interface the non-public side of these pieces, which is really kind of the facing side, 
the inside piece with a softer, lighter weight interfacing that it will make the two pieces marry together or union together much nicer for both sewing and for laundering and maintenance of it after you have uh, taken it either to the lawn, shirt launderer or if you're doing your own uh, shirt laundry. So with that in mind, we're going to discuss the firm pieces first that you're going to cut. So in the firm interfacing, the firmest one that you choose of everything, you're going to cut one collar, stand or band, one collar, and two cuffs, two pieces of cuff. That will be the firmest. And I have those right here. This is out of the firmest one that I have. There's that piece. Two cuffs and one collar. So that's what you're going to cut from the firm interface. Then from whatever you choose is the softer interfacing, which it could be that really, really lightweight, uh, crisp or shirt interfacing, or it could be something really, really delicate and soft like that couture sheer woven interfacing. And that happens to be what I um, cut these pieces. And for that, you're gonna do one collar stand or band, one collar, stand or band, one collar, two of the little placket, sleeve placket interfacings, and two cuffs. And like I said, I cut this out of the really, really soft, lightweight. So here is that, the collar, one, one piece of the collar two cuffs, one collar stand, go with that other one, and then two small pieces here that become my sleeve bracket. Okay. So those are the pieces that you're going to cut. I do want to quickly just um, show you an application again here of this. And so here I have um, left to apply um, my firm piece to my collar stand. I've already applied the lighter weight one, the softer one to the other one. That's already applied. But I want to demonstrate applying this. Now you can see that this is my wrong side. It goes on the wrong side. I've got that pin there identifying. So we can take that out now. And I have my tailor's tacks in here. I'm going to pull them down just a little bit so they're not really long there. But Generally, you can leave these in while you apply a fusible, and then I'll show you how to remove that here in just a moment once we're done doing this. Um, the first thing that you want to do is really make sure that you have a good hot iron, and I'm going to press or precondition my piece that's going to be applied here so that it's warm already. It's warmed up so that when I place my fusible, down, it's already got a start to uh, melting this fusible. Now, on the crisps, it's usually, it's slicker, you can feel it, but it's not lumpy usually like a lot of those um, fusibles that you find. This one is shiny though, you can tell by the sheen that's on here, and I don't know if the camera is picking that up or not, but it definitely is smooth and slick. This one, you can feel the texture of the uh, fabric. So I'm just going to lay this on top of it, like so. And one of the keys to good application 
of making this nice and permanent is that we give it enough heat for long enough. So the first thing that we usually do is steam it with that hot steam and that kind of like pre-base it and it will take out any shrinkage that might be happening when you when you first do that. And then I start in the center and I'm going to still give it some steam and pressure. You don't want to iron. You want to press. And you need to let this set upwards of 20 seconds. It really does need to get that hot. Now, I'm going to now get out my press cloth and show you that why you want to have sheer press cloth so that you can see this going on. And it is wise to use a press cloth to save your um, iron from uh, gunk getting on the bottom of it and having to clean it. Want to make sure that you have the fuse side down to the fabric as well. And it is also maybe wise to have something that you're fusing against instead of your good um, cover on your ironing surface or pressing surface. So maybe you have another piece of muslin or something that you could lay down or of ironing fabric um, that you can purchase and um, do all your fusibles against that. Bring this down here. Lots of people who later see that they have little bubbles that look like air bubbles or maybe after laundering or working with it, it starts to lift in areas and you get these little wrinkles or bubbles. Some people will say that it shrunk on me, right, after I washed it and dried it or something, that they think it's the interfacing that shrunk. It's not. What happens is, generally, is if you start to see the interfacing lift or causing bubbles or little puckers and wrinkles, it's because you did not get a hot enough fusing done where the fusing actually had a chance to melt and adhere to your fabric. The second thing is, is you don't let it usually cool long enough. A lot of us like to like put that on, pick it up and go and start sewing. Well, when you do that, it hasn't had time to cool down and truly set. Because this is really hot. We're getting this really, really hot. In fact, sometimes when you first pick it up, it's almost too hot to touch when you actually are done fusing. Um, so you, a good rule is to let it cool for five minutes before you really, really work with it. Uh, even if it's cool enough to kind of set it over to the other side, but still let it lay flat and continue to cool down while you um, are preparing maybe another piece of fusing. Also, a lot of people ask me about using a press, the big Elna presses or a press to apply interfacing that they think it goes faster. Well, it, it does look like it's um, a speedy help, you might say, but a lot of times those, those presses don't get it hot enough or long enough and you can't see what's going on underneath it once you put that press down and uh, you end up maybe having terrible wrinkles or something move on you and um, I just don't recommend it. I really, really don't recommend using those presses. Okay, so here we've got one applied and um, it's hot. Um, I'm going to let it cool just a little bit, but I did want to show you about pulling these out. They will pull right out. You see that? It just pulled right out. What I usually do is I come and put down my pattern piece again, and I remark them with just a little dot. You can see that that's been done on this one, so that when I do pull them out, I still have a nice marking there, and I'm not le I haven't left it. And the last thing that you're going to want to make sure is, is to come back in at, once it's nice and cool, which I let this one cool down now, and trim away any of this extra because you do not want to have an ill shape. It's very important that you have that 
really the correct shape around it.